In the public consciousness, the titans of paleontology, those icons that have stamped their names into the pop culture zeitgeist, are mostly all from Western countries, or those that have experienced Western colonialism even in the sciences. Tyrannosaurus, Apatosaurus, Brontosaurus, Stegosaurus, Triceratops, Allosaurus, Parasaurolophus, all American. Velociraptor, Spinosaurus, Carnotaurus, and Gallimimus are the few that have slipped in from those non-Western countries. However, even among these biases, there is an exhaustive list of fossil animals and even critters as narrow as dinosaurs from a ton of countries that escape fame. For example, there seems to be a giant void in public knowledge or even just general perception of fossil animals from basically any Middle Eastern country or any Asian country outside of China, Mongolia, Japan, or India. Despite the void in knowledgeability, there have been many hardworking people that have collected and described large swaths of the geology and paleontology of these countries. For example, the Central Asian country of Kyrgyzstan is home to a cornucopia of good rock units from various points in Earth's history. Good, that's not unusual for any given region on Earth. As far as fossils go though, some of the better rock units are from the Middle to Late Triassic, Early to Late Cretaceous, and Middle Jurassic. There are a few formations with fossils from the Paleozoic and Cenozoic eras, but I want to focus on the Mesozoic formation that has produced the largest number of named or nameable Kurzgus dinosaurs and dinosaur contemporaries. That rock unit is the Balabanzai formation of western Kuzgustan. It is the last formation in a succession of rock units that record a major shift from moist to arid conditions during the Middle Jurassic which starts with the lower coal-bearing Toshkumir formation, with the Igrisai formation above that, and the Balabanzai capping it all off before an unconformity erases a bunch of the rock record up until the early Cretaceous sediments of the Kojibad formation. Late 1960 fossil expeditions to Kyrgyzstan, led by Russians, were the first to officially publish dinosaur remains in the region. They found the sauropod Ferganosaurus of the Balabanzai Formation. Supposedly, an Ornithischian dinosaur was recovered from the region in the early 2000s, published as Ferganocephaly in 2005, but it remains a dubious animal. A huge number of fossils from across the various Middle Jurassic animal groups have been uncovered from this formation, but none have received names. There were likely minor excavations and expeditions to this region after the 1960s work, but the next major movements would be in the early 2000s, the same series of excavations that found that dubious ornithischian. Another excavation, started around the same time, was undertaken at locality FTU-1, west of the town of Tashkumir, Jalalablad Oblast, Kyrgyzstan. This site has seen periodical work from 2005 to 2006, then in 2009, 2014, 2016 to 2017, and 2023, which uncovered a bunch of fossils of different animals, but namely two specimens of a brand new theropod dinosaur that extends its family further northwest. Paleontologist Isaac Bakirov led the first excavation to the FTU-1 site when the two theropod remains were first found. In 2006, Bakirov found a backbone and a finger, and more fossils were collected from the site up until 2009. In 2014, even more remains, including some leg bones, were recovered. But work had to stop because the rest of the specimens were deeper into the slope of the rock layers they were excavating. The 2016-2017 field season saw more hard work done on removing the rock layers around the Balabanzai formation outcrop that sealed away the rest of the theropods, which ended up being recovered. The 2023 season saw a bunch of Germans and Kurzgiz researchers go back to the site, open it up even further, and find a bunch more flotsam and jetsam. All of this work culminated in the holotype specimen, a pair of bones that went behind the eye called the postorbitals, the left bone that connects to the lower jaw, the quadratojugal, then a bunch of vertebrae from the end of the back, some from the hips, and almost all of the hips and both hind limbs. There are also a few torso ribs, a hand bone and claw, and a furcula or wishbone. The paratype was a smaller individual that included the left and right halves of the part of the pelvis that points forward, the pubis a chunk of the right part of the pelvis that bends backwards, the ischium, and a right tibia. 
Aside from these specimens, a bunch of teeth were also found. The new theropod was described as Alpgaracus kirgizicus in a zoological journal of the Linnaean Society paper published by Oliver Rauhat, Isaac Bakirov, Oliver Rings, Alexander Fernandez, and Tom Hubner in August of 2024. Let's take a look at the bones to see what type of theropod dinosaur we now have on our hands. When all of the skeletal elements are put together, this is what the whole animal looks like. Yeah, not a great specimen, but there are plenty of far more fragmentary ones out there with names. The author team named the critter Alpkatakush because that is the name of a giant mythical bird that helps out heroes in many stories in Kyrgyz culture. The species name is the generic place name usually slapped onto fossil animals found in non-Western countries. From the fossils recovered, Alpkarakush was a relatively large theropod dinosaur with lightly built hind limbs, small feet, and possibly a large chunky head with an arched crest over the snout. This is inferred from the animal's closest relatives, something I gotta get to here quickly so that you can get some idea of what the animal may have looked like. Uh, but before I do that, I want to show you what I mean by large. In order to get an idea of the size of the bloody thing, let's bring in Mr. Man from Animal Planet's The Most Extreme. When the missing bones of Alpkarakash are filled in with close relatives, the sizes of those relatives are compared and contrasted, and some maths are done. Alpkarakash is estimated to have been at least 7 to 8 meters, 23 to 26 feet in length, which is relatively big and in line with the majority of Allosaur specimens. Thanks, Mr. Man. Once all the bones were field prepared, jacketed, and returned to the collections of the Institute of Geology at the National Academy of Sciences in Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan, and then further prepared, measured, photographed, and photogrammatized, the team did two major analyses, phylogeny and histology. Histology is the least important to the evolution of Alpkarakush, so let's take a look at that first. Histology is the study of microscopic tissue anatomy. In order to do this with fossils, the procedure is usually to cut a slice through the cross-section of a sturdy bone with a rock saw. This allows for a cross-section of the bone across the center so that growth rings can be observed. However, plenty of other interesting microscopic bits of physiology are also found this way. After a big slice is taken, it gets mounted onto a microscope slide and then polished down to a specific thickness in order to see specific details. After all that mess, you put it under the microscope and hit it with different wavelengths of light. This analysis on Alpgarakush found that the larger individual was somewhere around 17 years of age at the time of death based on the lines of arrested growth in the bone, which show themselves as thick lines during times of lots of growth and thin lines during times of less growth, the team found that the larger individual had begun to reach or had reached maturity as it was still growing, but very slowly. The smaller individual was definitely a large juvenile or small subadult at the time of death. The paper doesn't provide an exact age as they only observed three lines of growth and didn't see any remodeling in the bone. Remodeling is something that happens when the animal gets really old. The bones need to make room for more layers of bone so it absorbs and remodels the old layers, which can of course obscure exactly how old the animal is, though there are ways to account for this. Great, now we know how old they were, but I still haven't really told you what they looked like. To do that, I need to show you the author team's work on the computer. When the team quantified all of Alpkarakush's anatomical traits and put that data into the phylogenetic software of their choice, and then put in the quantified traits of over 100 other theropod dinosaurs from across the whole theropod tree, they found that Alpkarakush was a metriacanthosaurid allosauroid. In one analysis, Alpkarakush was equally likely to be related to the European Metriacanthosaurus, Thai Siamotyrannus, and Chinese Sinraptor in what is called a polytomy. There is likely insufficient information to say whether any one of these animals is more or less closely related to any other animal. In a second analysis, Alpkarakush placed as an offshoot before another polytomy group that holds Metricanthosaurus, Siamotyrannus, and Sinraptor. 
In both analyses, Alp Karakush and friends are closely related to the two species of the Chinese Yangshuanosaurus and also the Chinese Shidaisaurus. Some past researchers have further specified that there is a Metriacanthosaurinae subfamily within the Metriacanthosauridae, with other allosaur-like theropods being placed at various points inside and outside the more specific Metriacanthosaurinae, but the Alp Karakush team omitted this distinction. What does this placement say for what the rest of Alp Karakush looked like? Well, unfortunately, the animal for which this family was named, Metriacanthosaurus, is very fragmentary. It's just a hip piece, a leg bone, and a chunk of backbone. Siamotyrannus is also janky, just being a hip with some vertebrae, plus a possible tibia and some teeth. Awesome. Shidaisaurus is also pretty scrappy and is also mostly the hip and some vertebrae, though it has some of the back of the skull as well. The most complete of this group are Sinraptor and Yangshuanosaurus. Both are known from enough individuals and specimens that there are possibly two species of both. Thankfully for Alp Karakush, the majority of the Allosauroidea group looked similar to one another. By that, I mean they all looked like Allosaurus with various slight differences. The biggest divergence was the Carcharodontosauridae group. These guys adapted much smaller arms, big, nasty claws, high-ridged spines, distinctly triangular skulls, and of course, huge size. The Metriacanthosaurids, on the other hand, seem to have developed their skulls to be more robust than the usual Allosaurian shape, with tall ridges over the snout and eyes. In many respects, they looked somewhat like the Neovenatorids. The Metriacanthosaurids also had tall neural spines, but nowhere near as ridged as the Carcharodontosaurids. It doesn't help that the majority of Yangshuanosaurus skeletal mounts are some of the worst Chinese knockoff looking things you've ever seen walk out of the 80s or 90s. They also seem to be cast from the same mold or cast from other casts, it's very weird. Famed paleoartist Yoshua Kanupa was commissioned to do a piece for the press release of the paper and he wrote a blog-ish post about his process. The post-orbital bones that create the back half of the eye socket indicate the presence of some bosses around the eye. The lacrimal bones, the ones that form the front of the eye socket and are often the ones to actually form a crest in front and over the eye in many other allosauroids, was not preserved. However, if the post-orbitals suggest Alpkarakush had something cool going on there, then it could be that it had something even more impressive going on with the actual display part of the skull. Under this inference, and using Sinraptor and Yangshuanosaurus as fillers, Yoshua came up with this visage for the beast. He gave Alpkarakush some pretty gnarly post-orbital crests, with a huge pair of ridges over the snout and in front of the eye. If it was anything like its relatives, then it probably carried around a pair of moderately large arms, ending in three recurved hook-like claws, one of which was preserved in the holotype specimen. These claws were used to grapple prey and bring them closer to the slicing mouth. I wouldn't be surprised if they could outright kill smaller prey items with their hand claws alone. Speaking of which, what was being terrorized by Alp Karakush? Alp Karakush comes from the Balabanzai formation of Kyrgyzstan. This rock unit has been dated, thanks to biostratigraphy and the presence of pollen, to the Bathonian to Kalovian stages of the Middle Jurassic Epoch of the Jurassic period, between 168 and 164 million years ago. The rocks at the Alp Karakush site consist mostly of fine-grained grayish sandstones and red mudstones. It seems this unit of rock represents a similar environment to most other dinosaur-bearing rock units. A riverine floodplain stocked with coniferous forests and ferny ground coverage. The fineness of the sediments also suggests a lower elevation. The only other dinosaurs known from this formation are the basal sauropod Phryganosaurus, that dubious ornithischian Phryganocephaly, the enantiornithine Praeornis, and then a handful of superfragmentary material indicating the presence of stegosaurs, titanian theropods, and neosauropods. Not entirely unusual for the time and continent. Rampharynchon pterosaurs were present alongside bowfins, lungfish, sharks, and hybodonts. There are a lot more named small animals, 
such as the Temnospondyl amphibian Ferganobetrachus and the salamander Cocartus, the turtles Toxochilodes and Shinjiangochiles, the lizard Changetisaurus, the crocodiliform Sunosuchus, and the mammals Ferganodon, Peritatodon, Simpsonodon, and Tashkomirodon, plus indeterminate remains of Caristodeers and other mammals. Kind of interesting that more is known of the bottom rungs of the ecological ladder from this time and place than is known of the giant dinosaurs, though obviously this paper shows that a lot more dinosaur stuff is probably present in Kyrgyzstan and neighboring countries than people think. I can't wait to learn more about these stegosaurs from these regions. That's about it for Alpkarakush. What do you think? Let me know what else you hope is found in these Middle Jurassic deposits. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.